We got early access to GPT 5.2, so I wanted to put it through its paces in Kilo and share my review. So we usually test new models by having them build our favorite demo game, the 2D platformer Kilo Man, but since I'm based in New York City and we have the 2026 World Cup coming here this summer, I thought I'd try out a new prompt. So I'll pull up the Kilo extension in VS Code and we'll give it this prompt. Create a modern detailed 2D soccer game called Kilo Cup designed for single player. The player controls a Kilo team with yellow and black colors and progresses through the tournament bracket playing matches against opponents to ultimately win the World Cup trophy. Now, Kilo has five default specialized agent modes, with orchestrator being the mode that agentically distributes subtasks across the other modes. So we'll use orchestrator mode here, and I'll send off the prompt. Okay, so even before I check out what it built, the first thing I noticed is that the model generated really intelligent subtasks while in orchestrator mode and an impressive architecture plan while in architect mode. So if we pull up the architecture plan, we can see that it uses relevant frameworks like React, Canvas, and Next.js app router, complete with state management, persistence, custom data models and game systems, and even things that I didn't think of like tiebreak rules, game edge cases, and helpful UI components. If we look here, we can see the implementation sequence that it ordered for Kilo's code mode, which in my opinion is intelligent and sensible. So this is already making me optimistic about 5.2's long horizon task planning and oversight, which is becoming more and more important in the landscape of agentic engineering. So let's go ahead and pull up the game. All right, so we have the opening menu here with all the flags in the background. We can view the controls and tips um, and we can start the game. All right, so it looks like we're playing Germany first. We'll kick off here. Oh, we're already going. And wow, this is super impressive. It's fully playable. The graphics look great. The playability is excellent. The players on both sides react and move like actual soccer players should. And you can pass and score goals. And everything works, frankly, even better than I'd hoped. And I should note, I suspect that this is a much more complex game to design than the original Kilo Man platformer, being that there's multiple playable characters and a reactive defense and a bunch of dynamic elements that depend on my input as a player. So this is a super exciting result. If we go back to look at the code, we can see there's clean component separation, state management, collision detection, and effective game loop and animation design. All things that a game developer would have to consider if designing this manually. But let's be honest, right? Generating a working demo in one shot, as good as this one is, is quickly becoming table stakes in the current environment of AI engineering. So what about extending this with a task that real developers might actually be challenged with here? Let's ask it to add mobile-friendly touch controls. So we'll prompt it with this. Add support for mobile play. Show virtual joystick and buttons only on mobile and keep keyboard controls on desktop. So this means it needs to detect the device, abstract the input handling, add a UI that only renders when needed, and do all of that without breaking what already works. So we're going to stick with orchestrator mode and let's go ahead and run that. All right, so that's done. And we're going to go ahead and deploy that to a shareable URL with Kilo Deploy, which is a new feature that enables one-click deployments of Next.js apps right from the Kilo dashboard. So I'll go ahead and deploy that. And now we can see that we have this shareable URL here. Click on it and we can see the desktop version still works. So I'll go ahead and send that to my phone and there it is. And it works really well actually, which means that the model can also handle extending the code it wrote in practical and somewhat challenging contexts. So my final review is this. This new model is legit. And in the current landscape where new frontier models are shipping almost weekly, it's not just about generating code that runs anymore. It's about generating code that's structured well, handles real requirements, and can be extended without falling apart. And that's exactly what GPT 5.2 did in this experiment, and frankly to a degree that was beyond my expectations. So I'm definitely excited to use this more, and I'd love to hear what everyone else's thoughts are on it.